This is the actual winner's enclosure where past Breeders' Cup turf champions such as Fantastic Light, Pilsudski, De Lamy and High Chaparral all won the Irish Champion Stakes. This place is really special. So it seems only fitting that we are right here in Leopardstown for the latest edition of Rundown with Rosie. I'm Rosie Tapner and with less than two months to go before the Breeders' Cup World Championships in California, the Win and Your In series has truly hit its stride. Might we have seen the next flight line come out of the Pacific Classic at Del Mar or will we see a European contender successfully try their hand at the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic just like Ravens Past did 15 years ago? But before all that, let's recap on all the action here in Ireland over the weekend where there were five Breeders' Cup winning your ins. Velasquez on the stand side nudges ahead of Capulet with a gap then to Atlantic Coast. Diego Velasquez on the stand side of Capulet. Tahir on the stand side draws level with just beautiful that away from Rogue Millennium. And it's Tahira who leads deep in the closing stages. Is going to win her fourth career group one in the matron. Augusta Rodan leads 150 yards to go. Railing is Luxembourg. Nashua over the top on the outside. Augusta Rodan is in champion spin. to go, Moss Tucker to get ahead, go by, equality, Moss Tucker on the stand side, as up on the flag, five, it's a rejuvenated Moss Tucker, what a score from Billy Dean, it's a battle of 150 yards to go, Fallen Angel on the inside is digging deep, and is fending off Vespertillo in the void there. Aidan O'Brien has won the most Breeders' Cup turfs out of any trainer in the world. And it was High Chaparral who kicked it all off for him in 2002. And that same horse managed to back it up again 12 months later in that thrilling dead heat with Johar at Santa Anita itself. Wind forward and it looks like Aidan might have one hand on a magnificent seventh Breeders' Cup turf with August Rodin, who won the Irish Champion Stakes here and looks like he might be able to follow in the hoof prints of his illustrious former stablemates. So you're effectively riding the best horses in the world for day in, day out. Yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> Augusta Rodin is in champion spin! Nice call it a job. <laughs> Eight runners lined up at the mile and a quarter start. They're off in the Group 1 Royal Bahrain Irish Champion Stakes as they emerge from stalls. The, the race was evenly run. Everyone had a shot. He, he, was, he was there and uh, he was always comfortable and, and in control and uh, signed a good horse. It is Luxembourg with the edge from Point Lonsdale poised as Augusta Rodin. Ryan had him in a great position. Perfect, lying in third. The horse did, it, did the rest, you know, when he hits the front, he does enough. Augusta Rodin leads, 150 yards to go. Augusta Rodin is in champion spirit in the Royal Bahrain on his champion stake. It's an honour to be involved with these kind of horses and that you trusted with them every day. He's intelligent and he's great to deal with. He's, um, he just does everything with ease. I ride him out every day at Valley Royal, so yeah, I've been with him since the start. I left England two and a half years ago. Um, I used to ride in England for Tim Easterby and I made a decision to retire from race riding and wanted to go somewhere where, you know, to ride this class of horse and the adrenaline and yeah, I haven't looked back. Most of my winners came, you know, on 
handicaps and brilliant, they're fab. I've always been very involved in the yard. When you get on an animal like this and you can just trust that you've got it underneath you, it's just a different feeling. There's a good chance you'll go for the Breeders' Cup, Santa Anita. It's a race that we all love. I love the weather, <laughs> for a start. Um, I love the ambience of the track, Santa Anita, and uh, it's very enjoyable. We'll obviously discuss it going forward, but um, I think there's a good chance of that happening. York may seem a long time ago, but since then, Connections of Mustardaff have come out to say that he is very likely to fly to California in search of decent ground. Officially ranked as the joint second best horse in the world, his win in the Judgment International booked him a ticket to the World Championships. We caught up with his team after he defeated Nashua and Paddington last month. Frankie in front, punching away, Mustard F, and it's a record-breaking jump on international success for Frankie on his farewell. The horse was brave and superb, but Frankie rode a genius of a race. My job was to get it right, not too fast, not too slow, and uh, luckily after 36 years I got it right. They're off. The four superstars break from the stall. I didn't think he'd be scaling these heights, and I think, as I've said before, I probably underestimated this horse. I didn't realise quite how fast he was. So Frankie glancing in behind the board, Master Duff. He's got a lead now, three lengths or so. He won so well in Saudi, and then really well at Ascot. So I just needed to, you know, we all wanted to see him do it again on the big stage. Paddington to go after Master Duff, to try and close. The gap is still a three lengths, two lengths away to Nashua. You know, the only way to be Paddington is be. Uh, Aggressive, you know, we're carrying seven pounds more and uh, I would rather be in front of him than behind and uh, because when you give a champion free or seven pounds and a length start is impossible to get past. The last half mile in sight and again Frankie has a look in behind and I'll see that Ryan Moore is now just asking Paddington to go after Mostard after. And Paddington was declared, oh this is going to be hard. Again Frankie has a long lingering look in behind aboard Mostard after. As Frankie said, look I'm never going to beat Ryan if I sit behind him, let Ryan dictate this race. Can Paddington get past? Nash were on the right, is staging a challenge, the Fox is back in fourth. So we're going to have to take the game to him unless he goes on at a real good pace, you know. Uh, so it was sort of doubly satisfying. Frankie in front, punching away, Mostard F, and it's a record-breaking Chudmont International success for Frankie on his farewell. Mostard F beat Nashua, Paddington only third, and the Fox is back in fourth. Has there been a more appropriately named horse than Live in the Dream? His trainer, Adam West, is just 34 years old and he only has about 40 odd horses at his stables. Live in the Dream was his first ever Group 1 runner and went on to win the Nunthorpe Stakes at York. Let's meet his very emotional owner, Steve DeLamos. How the hell did we beat that lot? It's a surreal experience, I can't really describe it. Can they get to live in the dream? And Sean Curran looks like going to be an all the way win and a surprise in that unthought. Coming into the last 50 yards when there was no high field princess on either side of me. <laughs> God, what a, what a feeling, what, a, what an amazing feeling in front of this crowd. And in a race like that on, on a horse as, as good as that, on a horse with the raw speed and talent that he has. Like, it's no secret that's the way we ride him. We like to nick lengths, come out the gates and ride him aggressively. And he's got the turn of foot to boot as well, you know, where he can take them off their feet in the closing stages of the race. We were trying to work out a way how we could come to, to the States because he's a small, very quick horse, suited by quick turning tracks. And um, we thought, well, we've got to go to the States and it was just very, very expensive to, uh, to take him there. And um, it just so somehow turns out that we've, um, he's just paid for himself to go. He wants this ground, he wants quick ground. He has it's clear on the video, you know, it's there in HD telly, he just skips across the top of the ground. He's had his ideal to condition today, a little touch of a tailwind. So we got another horse called Liv in the moment. Unfortunately, a few years ago, I lost all my family over about a two year period. I lost my brother, my sister, my cousin, my nan, my mum. They all passed away and we were going, I was going through a tough time and we got this horse and my wife said to me, look, we live in the moment. And I said, 
that's the horse. Yeah, look, I think this is my first season, really, in the last few years. It's been uninterrupted through injury. I've dislocated my shoulders five times. It's been it's been a bit of a bit of a roller coaster ride with injury, but um, had my best ever season. We're going to California. If this is going out there, guys, I love you guys. I'm looking forward to it. As I mentioned, we had elite level races galore in Europe, which were highlighted by Breeders' Cup win and you're in races at York, Leopardstown and the Curra. But let's not forget about the key races stateside. It still gets smoking. Santine for stopping on the inside spooky channel. Get smoking every step of the way. Be a can man on the outside, Motorious. Be a can man, Motorious. Motorious gets the lead. Late run from Cherubic Factor, but Motorious wins it well. And Parnak still strong. A two length advantage. McCulloch is fully extended, and she has a lot of work to do late, and she's not going to catch Parnak and Dylan Davis all the way in the Flower Bowl. And now here's Gold Phoenix down the center. Also coming late, Cash Equity and Capkin. Peak on the outside, Gold Phoenix doing best, Gold Phoenix to win, Gold Phoenix has won it. Coming gamely, Arabian Nights all hard battling on, slow down Andy, any one of these three, it's Arabian Night hanging on, go Rocket Rider, Arabian Night has won the Pacific Classic. With that win in the Pacific Classic, Arabian Night joins Mustadaf and Bright Future as this month's latest entries into the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. The Longines Breeders' Cup turf has been busy this month. Four new entries, including Aidan O'Brien's August Rodan and Bolshoi Ballet. The Maker's Mark Philly and Mare turf sees Tahira joined by Warm Heart and Parna. Finally, the Breeders' Cup turf sprint added four contenders, including the fairy tale Live in the Dream. As the Breeders' Cup World Championships are fast approaching, I have a few key races for you to follow along with this month. Let's start with the Qatar Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, one of Europe's most prestigious races, and a win and you're in for the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. The Vosberg at Aqueduct, which Elite Power used as a stepping stone to Qatar Breeders' Cup sprint glory last year. And let's not forget the abundance of win and you're in races at Keeneland at the start of October. If you want to follow along more, then head to breederscup.com forward slash challenge. But for now, it's goodbye from Ireland and I'll see you next month.